Hi, Timothy. Daphne here. Good to hear from you again. How are you? Uh, thank you for sending in your next essays. Sorry, I was pausing there. I'm just thinking, when is your exam? Because um, I know you've been writing essays for such a long time. Are you doing it in January? I think you are. Um, okay, but this is good. All right, so this bar chart, yeah, the bar chart demonstrations, the birth and death rates. Okay, so I've highlighted that because... Um, you know it's good, a good idea not to use the same words as in the question, okay? So you need to try and find a way around that. So I'm suggesting uh, the levels of births, it's difficult to avoid that, and mortality in five different Eastern European countries. Okay, that's fine. But at least change something. Don't just say exactly the same thing in there because you don't get any marks for that. That's really important. The highest contributor to birth rates okay, was, so this, uh, yeah, I'm assuming this is past tense because these babies have been born. So I'm going to go past tense. I know there's no time on here, but I'm going to go past tense. Was made by Croatia with 11,100, followed by Poland, yeah. Slovakia. Um, okay, so you asked me about vocabulary as well, so let's look at that. Slovakia had, so just assume past tense all the way through, 10,700 births. Uh, just put births. Um, compared to, or which was, or here, only slightly higher than. Poland. Okay, so note this, so only slightly higher than, uh, oh, so, sorry, slightly more, I'll take out higher. But what I'm doing is another way of comparing. Only slightly more than is another way of comparing. So you said we don't want to put highest all the time, but you could try this. So we would take out that, could go. Hungary and Croatia both displayed less than, or both registered, we registered a birth, a birth or a death in English, both registered less than 10,000 um, number of births um, with 9,000, okay, yeah, babies, but they're babies, not people, respectively, babies born, respectively. Okay, so just a little bit of tidying up in that bit there. Okay, so we've just put one more comparative structure in there, which is to do with the grammar, and just put babies in here, which is to do with the vocabulary rather than people. Hungary contributed to the highest. Well, why don't you have put compared to births? So you're linking the idea through and you're putting another bit of grammar in there. Hungary contributed the highest number. Uh, yeah, um, gosh, by far. Um, the most significant then, let's do that. Number of deaths. Okay. So if you do the most significant number of deaths, yeah, um, at 13,000, while Slovakia only had neither the lowest. Mm. Yeah, obviously the lowest of the total number of deaths among the given countries. Okay. <clears throat> right. So you've got that one compared to that one. Yep. Okay. Uh, right. Second, Croatia experienced 11,000, which is the number of deaths. Um, so it linked this together, which was, I will not link it, but make that number. So which was the same number of births in Czechoslovakia. So don't just do births all the way through and deaths all the way through. Uh, you know you have to compare. So this is a lovely one for comparing. Experienced 11,100 number of deaths, uh, which was, which equaled, you could have, which equaled the number of births in the Czech Republic. Okay. Um, 
So, and then additionally, uh, or following this, okay, Poland, Czech Republic have the same number of deaths. Okay, all right. Yep, good, that's absolutely fine. Overall, Hungary had the highest death rate, whilst undoubtedly clear that Slovakia contributed the lowest. Okay, the Czech Republic has the lowest, yeah. Um, so you, you need to join this together while or whereas. Okay, the highest and its lowest was, was, lowest was noticed. Was um, reported by Croatia. So reported or registered are also verbs that you could have in there. Uh, I wouldn't use made and had because you can do higher level words than that. Okay. Uh, now you could put your overall sentence up here. Tim, there's, we might have done that before. I think I've personally, I like it better up here to come in here. Uh, there is some disagreement. It doesn't matter. But for me, I think that reads uh, more logically. Um, but check out again all the task one stuff on the website uh, and you'll get some really on the task one bar chart there's some really good vocabulary there and really good sentences that you could use as well so have a look at that um, but you, you have tried and well done but so what can you make it do to make it more interesting try those suggestions and mix it up a bit don't just do births and deaths so it looks like a list try to avoid just a list okay uh, so protecting the environment is the government's responsibility. Others think that every individual should take responsibility. Okay. The issues of the environment, climate change and pollution have grown in importance over the last decade, over the last few decades. Good. Experts and scientists, good, throughout the world have debated whether it's the government's or every individual's duty to tackle the climate crisis facing the planet. Mm, okay, careful here. You've got governments. Yeah, and individuals. So don't repeat those. You know that. Don't repeat those. Yeah. So instead of governments, you could have policymakers. Yeah. Or individual citizens. I mean, you could change it a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, duty, good, well done. Okay. Tackle the climate, good. Even though there are credits to both points, um, yes, I'm more in favor of the latter statement. In this essay, I will discuss both views using examples. Yep. Um, credits, arguments in favor. You wouldn't really talk about credits there. Of. You would have rather than two. Okay. So get rid of that. Okay. All right. Nice intro. Otherwise, that's fine. There's ample evidence that governments play a significant role in reducing the issue of climate change and other environmental problems. This is largely because they, you don't need to repeat the uh, government, but you could say again, uh, authorities or local authorities or regional authorities or central authorities are more able to make commitments to curb greenhouse gas emissions and introduce laws, taxes and investments. Excellent. Very nice. Three. Yes. To alleviate the detrimental impacts of climate change. Good. For example, in paper research, excellent studies. Oh, research and studies. Okay. Research from, I would just say research. You don't need both. From the UK government consistently found that if the government in Brazil was willing to take immediate and tangible actions to protect the rainforest in the face of deep bushfire, the environmental destruction would have good. This is what I'm waiting for. <laughs> I was waiting to get to your other verb. Well done. Would have been severely lessened. So if the government of Brazil, okay, had been willing, okay, had been willing. So very nice here. Basically, what you have got here is a third conditional. So third conditional, you had been willing, okay, and then would have been. So these are your verbs which need to balance. So you got that one right. That's excellent. The other half of it needs to be in the past perfect. Okay, that's the other half of that third conditional. Very good. Very good. Very good. Therefore, and lovely vocabulary through here. Uh, therefore, 
Governmental actions and commitments are a crucial part of the solution in producing a more sustainable environment. Um, actions. Uh, motivations. And commitments. Okay. Just adding that, then you've got three again and more vocabulary, which is lovely. Okay. However, it should not be forgotten that environmental change can also be achieved by the collective effort from individuals. This can be explained by the fact that um, individuals are able to make small steps to bring about change and ultimately influence others to take action to reduce the effects of climate change. Okay. For instance, um, yes, you can hear the negative effects, negative and destructive. Just so you're not repeating all the time, effective climate change. So if you put in uh, a couple of adjectives there, it just breaks it up a bit. For instance, a recent article published by BBC News revealed that teenage activist Gesh Thunberg, who regularly skips classes to raise awareness about global warming, um, about global warming to Parliament. You'd have to put two Parliaments. I mean, yes, she goes into the parliament, but I would just say to parliament there has successfully inspired young people all over the world to take part in worldwide climate change campaign. Good. Thus, it's conclusively clear that individuals are able to make. Yeah, very, very good example. Well done. Relevant. Really good. In conclusion, even though governmental regulations and controls play an important role in providing solutions, I firmly believe that individual efforts in activism could lead to positive impacts in global awareness by by, by raising sorry awareness and pressurizing uh, authorities. Uh, yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, so Tim, nice work here. You asked me to really tell you exactly what you can do. So task achievement, yes, you've answered this essay really nicely. Um, you have given me your opinion, which is great. So that's all, no problem on the task achievement. You've developed the essay nicely. So you're really working hard here to give me more, like your paragraph is fuller. So there's more reasons in your paragraph. I'm asking less questions. I'm not going why, what all the time. Um, so in terms of the development of your argument, going really nicely. Cohesion, again, it's good for it's nice for me to follow this through. Um, so your cohesive devices, so this is largely because, uh, for example, therefore. So this all makes the essay flow nicely, so very happy with that. Vocabulary as well, uh, particularly in this paragraph. Um, so bring about change, ultimately influence, uh, take action. You've got some good uh, collocations going in there. Regularly skips classes, raise awareness, um, is successfully inspired. This is nice, really, really good stuff. These are words that sit together naturally in English. Therefore, it makes it, again, easy to read. And congratulations on pushing in this third conditional. It's unusual. We don't use it very much, but you've done it very well there. So good tasks. Well done, Tim. Thank you. Keep on going.